Hi Flosstube, I hope all's well. My name is Kirsty, Crafting Kirsty here on YouTube and also on Instagram. And this is a whip braid. Well, it's going to be a bit of a mashup actually of a floss tube that I never got around to filming and also a whip braid. Um, so I hope you're well. It is Sunday the 7th of August 2021. Lovely day outside. You'll have to excuse my hair. Just had a shower um, and it just drip dries on my face. Um, I didn't get to record in July. I had planned on it. Uh, we went away for a couple of days, which was really nice. We went down to the southwest and walked on the coastal footpath between Biddeford and Bude. Came home, I tested positive for COVID and we started harvest all in the space of 24 hours. So that was quite interesting. Um, to be fair, you know, I felt fairly crap for two or three days, just flu-like symptoms, but nothing that a LEMSIP, LEMSIP can, you know, kick into touch so it's a case of I drink my limb sip I've got four hours let's go before I sit down again and have another limb sip um but it was fairly slow to start anyway harvest was um it is done and dusted we've topped the stubble so we've cut the stubble down to the length that we want it to be and we can't do anything else at the moment because it is too dry and too hard to actually get any of the implements into the ground so we're sort of sitting here kicking our heels and planning another trip away um, being British, obviously, I'm going to have to discuss the weather. <laughs> we did have the heat wave. We did work through the heat wave. Uh, we actually got 40.2 here, and that's on a north-facing shaded wall of the house. Um, the combine has air conditioning. Three of the four tractors had air conditioning. So poor old John <laughs> pulled the short straw. He had to drive the, the tractor without the air conditioning. Um, yeah, I did a fairly passable impression of a roast chicken on both days, I think. It was hot. He just, every time he got back up to the yard, he just doused himself in a hose pipe from literally head to toe and then went back out again. Um, felt very sorry for him. Not sorry enough to swap a tractor. <laughs> I have to say, I kept my air conditioning on my tractor because uh, I'm a bit mean like that. But yeah, it's done and dusted, so we shall see. Um, and other than that... No real news. I've had a couple of children that have gone off on holidays and they've managed to avoid all the travel chaos, which was good. Um, and I think hopefully we're heading back down to the southwest coast next week. Uh, my son is actually going to Boardmasters, which is a festival at Newquay, and we should be able to get our walking done from Butte to Newquay. And so we're going to share the driving and all the rest of it. Um, so I've got a lot to show to you. As I said, I've got my whips. Uh, I only actually have 12 whips, which I'm quite happy with. I know if you're a monogamous stitcher, that's probably quite a lot. But I think within the general floss tube cross stitch community, I am definitely the D team in the amateur league for a uh, number of whips. <laughs> but in my defence, quite a few of those whips are mega monsters. Um, so I'm quite happy with just 12. I have a few finishes to show you. Uh, a couple of plans. And what I have done, because I've only got the 12 whips, is... I seem to have a habit of if I buy a pattern I, from a designer, I seem to have to buy two or three. I can't just buy one. So actually I've picked out if I've got, if I'm working on something that I've got other charts by the same designer, I've picked those out to show you. Yeah, I might never get to them. I hope to get to them all, obviously, because all cross stitches are invincible and have all the time in the world to stitch everything that they want to stitch. Um, so yeah, so I'm going to use that as a bit of filler. So I'm going to move a bit to the side because as I said, some of my projects are quite big and uh, I will need the space to show you them. I'm going to start my Hade. I only have one Hade project on the go. I think I will only ever have one full coverage piece on the go at a time. I enjoy it, but I find it very much the I have to, I have to sit down to stitch for a significant amount of time because by the time I've got this, the piece out, the threads out, the chart out, found where I am on the chart, blah, blah, blah. It takes me a bit of time. I'm not, I don't know how these people do it that can just pick it up and put a thread in and put it back down again. I just, yeah, I'm not in that mindset. So my first is the Heron Earth Designs. Here we go. I have to excuse the very crumpled chart. This is Mini Garden Gate um, artwork by Amy Stewart. Haven't done anything on this, I think, for a long time. As it's more of a winter piece. But here I am so far. I can't remember the fabric count, blah, blah, blah. This is the only piece that isn't ironed um, because it is gridded. 
<laughs> and I need those grids and I'm too scared to iron it in case I uh, in case I lose my lines but yeah oh well, that, that looks a bit better sorry so as I said I do have to buy things in threes um and I have another two charts to show you I have to say I have since consequently this was the I bought these very early on when I started cross stitching and I'd always thought oh, I'd never stitch hay I'd never stitch hay and then somebody said oh there's a sale on so I thought oh, I need to go and have a look then and um I bought these three charts and I still go and look every now and again and I think these are still the only three charts I will ever buy from hay to be quite honest with you um I do have yeah so now I'll start with this one which I think sadly they no longer have Crow of Crescent Hill, and I absolutely love this piece. And at this time of the year, normally I'm sitting on a tractor in a field doing a bit of work, and we get so many crows at this time. And there was one in a field, uh, the tree is no longer there, unfortunately. It was a dead tree in a dike. And um, this crow just used to sit, a long field, this crow just used to sit there and watch me driving all the way up, and it would like, out. Five, ten metres away, it would fly off, and then by the time I got back round, it would be back sitting on that tree watching me, and that just reminds me of that. This piece, actually, sorry. Can you see the fabric? If you can see the background, sorry, it's green and light greens. That is all, obviously, full coverage, the background. Semi-tempted to see if I can get a piece of... Well, I don't know, really. I don't know, because if it's dyed green, it probably isn't going to have the lines on it and I need my lines so we'll see and then my final haid which is a whopper is actually what is it mad tea party max colors this is an Alice in Wonderland sorry I don't seem to be able to get things very clear I need to sit up a bit there we go so this is an Alice in Wonderland inspired piece or piece Love Alice in Wonderland. This is obviously going to take forever. 235 colours, 450 wide by 556 high. But I do like it. And one of these days, I might go around stitching it. And then at the moment, the only other full piece I have, full coverage piece I have, is this. A mid Amish life, which I bought last year. So these are the three, sorry, these are three charts where you can st stitch them independently or stitch them all together. And I have watched um, Blitz Stitch stitch this, and he's just finished it, I think, at the beginning of this year at some point absolutely loved it he stitched it all together and uh it was one of those charts i thought i'd never find and then i think it was um christina of whilst iris naps mentioned that it was in this book and i literally launched across the coffee table to get my uh, phone to see if i could find the book and i could so i'm really really pleased to have that and at some point i also want to get out of stitching that so those are all the four coverage pieces we're now on to uh generals <laughs> as such so i have started this couple started this yesterday i think actually it's just a small you'll have to excuse the printout my uh, printer was dying at the time obviously monica's stitching studio she has an etsy shop scarecrow sampler as i said poor printout but it's basically scarecrow pumpkins sweet corn and sunflowers and i'm stitching this two over two on 28 count ren that my friend chris sent to me um there's i think ren's picture of this plus possibly but yeah so i'm enjoying it i've picked my own colors so i just sort of did a bit of a stash dive and i'm hoping to get that finished quite soon now that we have stubble in the fields it's autumn yeah irrelevant to the fact that it's august and it's still going to be 30 degrees this week apparently it's autumn um my oh i have got another one of hers sorry so i have got raven's flower bowl that i obviously printed at the same time because it's just as much of another crappy printout i absolutely love that i have seen this stitched up and it looks really good so this is sarsi oh no this is different sorry sorry but that's actually sarsi girl designs he's on instagram who actually oh 
Hold that for all. Back to that one in a minute. Okay, my next piece is the Beast. The Kim. Kim is coming out. Gigi R. Adapted Maria Cooper Sampler 1790. I started this with Elaine Rally Rally Stitcher, Penelope underscore pins on Instagram, Janet Dodd on Instagram, me and my friend Chris has started it, Bronte Stitcher or Chris, oh I can never remember other Instagram, go for the Bronte Stitcher. So we've all started this, we all bought it at the Essex Needles Retreat, we've all started it and uh, apparently we're all going to finish it next year at the Great British Sampler Weekend. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> so this is my absolute beast. I call it Kim because it is just a big ass bap. And I have to stand up to show you this piece. So I started, board, I, I haven't done any more of this. Sorry, I haven't done any more of this since I think the last time I showed it. But I've done quite a bit of the border. Put in a few of the cross borders and worked along the bottom. Um, this is 27 count Linda, hence the fact it's huge. And I'm doing it two over two. My satin stitches are three, using three, strand, thran, three strands of thread. Um, I will get back to that one. I do love this one. I like all my projects actually, so I'm going to stop saying that. I like them all. <clears throat> then we are on to, there's no particular order. Sorry, I should have said at the beginning. I think I have got a list somewhere of what I've started when. Every year, beginning of January, buy myself a nice diary, buy myself some pretty pens. Gets to about February, give up on the ghost. So I have started them, I will finish them at some point. This piece is Black Vintage Sampler from Al Forest Embroidery and I started this as a sal, start along with Ellie Welly Stitcher um, at Christmas time, actually last year. I haven't got very far at all. Elaine, I think, is working here on the horse and the carriage. Um, she's doing hers in black. She is using a variegated black. It looks really good. I wanted to go, I didn't, I don't want a black sampler. I don't know why I don't want a black sampler. So I decided to go more for browns. I was trying to get that sepia tone look. It hasn't worked, but I'm enjoying it anyway. I haven't got very much of this done at all. Literally only just started up in the top corner. I always start top right and I work my way along a top border and a side border or a side border and a bottom border mainly because I've had a couple of instances where I've nearly ran out of uh, fabric. And so I like to get at least two borders in to know that it's all going to fit on. And I also think then you can start jumping about and working off different places if you get a bit bored. Sorry, I need to keep remembering to turn it this way. Um, so yeah, so I've just got three or four different colours of brown, no particular rhyme or reason to it. Yeah, I will enjoy this when I eventually get back to it. No reason why I haven't worked on it, other than all the other new starts. Another Al Forest embroidery. This has been going on for a while. This is this Merry Christmas piece. And I have managed, so far I have got the Merry. Excuse this S up there. That was a full start. So I've got the Mary and I've got the uh, cup of Christmas. This is actually going to be my next focus piece. I think, yeah, I think it is. This is going to be my next focus piece. Might change my mind in a couple of minutes time, but this will be my next. Actually, scrap that. This might not be, I'll explain why. But ultimately I've got two or three smaller charts that I've had kicking around for a little while and I would just like to pick one up and not work on it monogamously, but it's always the one that I go back to to try and get it finished over the next couple of months. And I had thought it would be this and I might, it might be this one, but I will explain why later on. So other Al Forest embroidery charts that I have, I actually only have two. 
I bought this, everything's black and white, I'm sorry. I bought this New Year sampler um, only a little while ago, actually. So pretty. I saw it stitched up in, a, I think somebody stitched up in red. And I sort of thought well, I'd probably use red, gold and green. Yeah, it's very pretty. And I also have, so I've got piles of stuff everywhere. I'm just trying to make sure I put the right thing on the right pile. Apples of Youth. Um, I picked up as well. I absolutely love this one. Love the foxes. And this is in blues with, I think the uh, apples look to be gold. So I probably will do blues in this. So those are the other two Al Forest embroidery charts that I have. Then we're on to my birthday start. So this year in July, um, I managed to convince, bully, force, um, Stitchy Rach and Ellie Welly Stitcher into starting Maria Huenaria, 1833 to 34, from Queenstown Samplers. Starting this underneath the Wonky Donkey Birthday Sale 22. I think I'll put link. I'll put everything down below. And I won't link anything, but I will put everything down below. So I think Rachel started on my birthday. I think Janet Doll started the plantation sampler on my birthday, or plantation sampler on my birthday. Thank you very much, Janet. And Ellie Welly Stitcher. I don't know. I don't know if Elaine started it actually on my birthday, but she has made a start on it. I was the only one that didn't start it on my birthday. Two reasons. My main excuse would be that the hotel that we were staying in didn't have very good lighting. The hotel we were staying in, because it was my birthday, was also very nice and I ate and drank too much and I basically just flopped onto the bed like a beached whale and went, God, I just can't. I also couldn't see. Couldn't see, couldn't see the fabric, not because I was that squiffy. I just couldn't see. So when I did eventually get around to starting it, which wasn't until we got back from holiday, um, I pulled on my big girl pants and I've bought a pack and this is 35 count, which is uh, the second highest fabric count I've ever used. Uh, it's just antique white. So I got, um, and I can see it. I do have to wear a pair of magnifiers. I wear contact lenses, but I am struggling a bit with those at the moment to see my cross stitch. I think I need some readers. And so I just bought some. And uh, yeah, so I've got this far so far. I have started as usual with a top border and a side border. I am, this is a beast, I am halfway through the side border. So it is going to be double the height of that. I don't know how far along the top border I am or am not. And I got a bit bored, so I went and put in some eyelets, I think. Or are they Algerians? I can't remember what they are now. But I put those in, and that's the first time I've ever done those, and they were good fun. I love that blue. Not, yeah, that's just such a gorgeous blue. But anyway, so that was my birthday start. Really enjoying it. It's going to take me forever. But, and thank you to everyone who started with me. Do I have another? No, I don't have another one of those. So... The next one is a restart. Um, I think I was showing this in my last floss tube, wondering whether I was going to manage it or not. I, and it is, sorry, I'll start with, it is Dutch Beauty. Perman of Copenhagen. Love this chart. Started on 25 count, one over one, because it's so big that I thought I need to stitch it, try and get it smaller. And um, having just done an entire sampler on 25 count, one over one, didn't enjoy it. I really struggled. And so I just thought, right, I'm going to cut my losses. And actually Penelope of uh, Penelope underscore pins messaged me and said, if you don't throw it in the bin, I'm quite happy to adopt it. Uh, I'd like to start that chart. So I sent it to her, obviously with a message saying, you know, if when you get to it, you don't like fabric colour or what have you, no offence will be taken whatsoever if you just cut that square out and or chuck it in the bin or what have you. Um, but she seems to like it. So I have restarted it. And this time I pulled on my even bigger girl pants. I bought 40 count. One over two. I do love working with one thread. And I've restarted it. So last time, sorry, last time I had done the first page. 
as far as that. This time, because it's on such a big piece of fabric, and again, I wanted to check, I've done basically all the way along the top border and down part of the side and just put in a half a windmill. Um, yeah, and again, with my readers on, I can see that fine, not as easily as the 35. It is a little bit slower progress. Um, yeah, call for DMCs again. Another biggie. Oh, I have got another permanent Copenhagen. Now, I picked this up from a charity shop many moons ago, and uh, I really like it. I do like these, I do seem to have a sort of a penchant for these uh, charts that are quite Dutch looking. Um, but yeah. Hasn't got name, it's just design number. But as I said, I picked this up from a charity shop for sort of £3.50. A couple of years ago now. Um, my next piece is Antrim's Folly from Heart's Ease Exemplar Works. This is another mega beast and I'm doing this on 27 count for ease of life. So it's going to be absolutely huge. Love, love, love this piece, but I have had quite a few traumas with it. I won't go through too much, but basically I'm not getting on very well with the um, sample stitches. No, not sample stitches. Speciality stitches, that's the word I'm looking for. Not getting on particularly well with those, so I've decided to cut my losses. I'm going to do it all in cross stitch, which you can do, apart from I can do the satin stitch, so I'll probably do that. Um so I've had various starts, restarts, fabric count sizes, blah, blah, blah. Uh, when I last put it down, I had got, this is where I'd got two. Um, I am going to have to rip back some of this. And I can't remember, annoyingly now, I think, possibly, is it the plat, or did I? Yeah, you see, it's out one. Yeah. So it is essentially this middle box, which has got, sorry, let me just fold this right over so you can see it. It's this sort of middle black box here that's all filling and has wording in it. And that that is supposed to have speciality stitches around it. But I can't work speciality stitches to get it to fit. I just can't do it. So that's going to have to come out. And it's also one half a stitch too wide here or I think. The bird is fine. The bird and the grass, I think that's all fine. So it's just a case of taking out that bottom piece, which I will do again. Love it. <laughs> but it's a beast. Um, my next piece is from the Sample Company, designed by Brenda Keys. Tall Ship Sampler, I think this one's called. I must go down to the seas again, to the lonely sea and sky, and all I ask is a tall ship and a star to steer her by. Is that lonely or lovely? I think probably lonely. Then on a ship like that, you'd have a lot more people with you, so maybe it's lovely. When I get around to stitching it, I'll tell you whether it's lonely or lovely. So I started this one in December, uh, and I'm going to use it as a sort of memorial piece for my father. Again, 27 count. That's as far as I've got. I had a lot of starts over Christmas time. So I think this was about a week's worth. And then there's a new start. I have bought another pattern from Brenda Key's sample company. I love all of her patterns. I really do. Um, but I need to get one or two of them stitched before I buy any more. And this is the Plant Wisdom Sampler. Um, so now, we're on to a random one. <laughs> a random one. So I am stitching Christmas pudding. And I saw this, I think, is it? Tina Stitches or Stitching with Tina had done this piece and I really, really liked it and I managed to find the magazine because it's quite an old magazine. 
Oh no, it's not. It's Christmas 2020. Well, that's very reasonably old for a magazine, isn't it? But I still managed to find it, I think, on eBay or Amazon. Um, yeah, so I have started this just on a piece of Ada. Really like it. And this is where, this is the one I think I will be focusing on, certainly for this next month, because actually I have now really learnt my lesson. Whenever we go away, I take two or three cross-stitch pieces with me. And the lighting is never good enough to see it, whether we're in a hotel or a B and B or a pub, and it just sits in the bag and it doesn't get done. Whereas this is big enough. Look at the hot. Look at the holes on that. This is big enough. I will be able to see this in a pub. So I will probably focus on this, certainly for next week. Take it with me and see how much I can get done within that week. But then I will swap back to my Al Forest embroidery. Happy Merry Christmas because I'd really like to get that finished. It's been kicking around for a while. And that will then become my focus piece. So that is classic Christmas pudding, although I don't know if that's actually the name of the... It's designed by Emma Congdon. It's cool. Love it. It's got some lovely colours in it. All DMC. I'm a DMC girl. Well, <laughs> she says the next piece is a fancy frog. Normally I'm a DMC girl. Um, so my next piece is a Reflé de Soir, and this is Eloise Cornu, 1896. I've no idea if that's how you say it. And for this, <laughs> I am using the um, Cottage Garden Threads from Australia, Hugs and Kisses, which is this. Lovely variegated red, it's a bit scruffy, sorry. Um, and I find these threads at Poppy Patch in Northamptonshire, which is actually a quilt shop. And they're always very bemused when I buy these and so I'm using them for cross stitch because they buy them for various, um, they have a lot of Australian designers. If you're into your Australian designer quilting, that's a good shop to go, Poppy Patch in Northampton. And they buy them for the embroidery and things on, it's gone now. Can't remember the name of the lady. As soon as I see it, I know. But anyway, for her design, she has a lot of embroidery and they buy it. They use a lot of those threads for that. Have full range, really nice shop. Don't buy up all the hugs and kisses because I need some more of it. <laughs> but that's Poppy Patch in Northamptonshire. Anyway, sorry, the piece. So this is as far as I've got. And you'll see now when I go across the top and down the side because that is the edge. It was a tense moment getting to there, I have to say, because I've got quite a bit of space that side. It's not that much, but if I'd hoofed it a quarter of an inch over, it'd have been better. So that's top. I'm, uh, I think I'm in, it's quite a distance between the sides and the starts of the letters. So I think I am going to have to work my way down to here to then get across, although I can count easily enough. Sorry, this is being stitched on 36 count vellum. Foxglove and lace, I think. Or maybe, no, foxglove and lace. Foxglove and lace linen, I think that is. Um, so yeah, so, and I think I might finish the border off in this Hugs and Kisses and then possibly get a different red. I don't know. It's going to be a long time before I get there anyway, so I'll make that decision when I get there. But I do need to get some more of that hugs and kisses. Yes, I think this was the highest count that I'd ever done, which is why it's taken me so long. And it is a beast of a border. And counting on it is unbelievable. Oh, and I've got two more Riffle de Soir charts. Just so you can have a laugh at my French pronunciation. So the first one is Ane Curve 1896. Again, apologies if that's not correct. Love this. I love these little sort of scenes. They're so pretty, so intricate. Absolutely love them. But all the borders on these charts are hard work. Anyway, so that's one. And uh, you'll notice with these charts, I don't have many alphabets and I am going to channel my inner Kim Goldman, the contented stitcher. I don't need to constantly 
stitch alphabets. I'm quite happy to stitch borders. So a lot of these, well, these I haven't got any alphabets to miss out of anyway, but I do have quite a number of charts that have got alphabets at the top. I'm just not going to be doing them. I'm going to take the board across the top. Anyway, I did because I was thinking, oh, I've got alphabets on these, but I haven't. So that's that one. And then the second one, sorry from referring to what I have, is Albertine Bourgogne, 1907. Bourgogne, Bourgogne. Love, love, love. That, that's just so pretty. So those are two charts in the stash. My next piece is my long dog samplers piece. If you've watched my frost tubes, you'll have seen this recently because I had a bit of a splurge and got another section of it done. And I am doing quilts. This has just got such Fabulous colours in it. I absolutely love them. And that's as far as I've got. I've got that second section done. Again, all the DMC, two over two. Possibly, I'd imagine it's 28 count, I'd have thought. And I do have two other long dogs. Now, this is actually the reason I ended up buying the other two. So obviously during the pandemic in 2020, she released her pandemic and it was freebie. So I went and downloaded it and then I felt a bit guilty because I had never actually bought a long dog samplers chart. So also I bought another two whilst I was there. I don't think I'm going to end up stitching this to be quite honest with you. I love to see other people stitching it. I love to see the finished project. I'm not sure I'm ever going to stitch it. But in my stash, it sits. Um, and then the other one I bought was Dilemma. Now, I really like this one. And my I, I didn't have a Dilemma. I was just going to stitch them all and rearrange the border and sort it all out. You can tell this was in the early days when obviously, you know, I could do anything and everything. Uh, I think Crafty Emily has started this actually, or is doing it. And I think she is doing all of them. Um, I probably am more likely just to do individual pillows now, I think, of the different animals. I love all the different sort of stories behind the animals and tales behind the animals. You've got There's a whole bump that comes with it when you download it. When you download it. And I could well be convinced to go back to uh, the Cottage Garden Threads and just choose different variegated colour for each animal or something. I might do it like that. Because um, actually, the animals aren't too bad. It's the borders that are you know, significant on this project. One of these days. And then the final piece, we're there already, 33 minutes in and we're into my final piece already, is the Huntsman from the Scarlet Letter. And again, you will have seen this reasonably recently because I was working on it. And I have got two. <laughs> See, you're balanced on a whole load of boxes and uh, you're about to topple. So that is where I am so far. This is a 27 count, two over two, all the called for DMC. The bird is slightly out, slightly out the bird is, I think. But fortunately, it doesn't really matter because that is quite, yeah, it has just got blue filling all around it. So I think when I next work on this, I'm actually going to have to carry on down this side and then work across the bottom so that I don't count off the bird as such. Sausage fingers. That's what attracted me to this chart in the first place was the, uh, the Huntsman's sausage fingers. And they're such bright colours. They're fab. And I actually have a lot of scarlet. I hadn't realised quite how many I had. I hadn't realised one of the charts that I really, really want to start is a scarlet letter, but I've realised now. 
So I'll quickly show you those. Um, man, dogs and deer. It's a very definite theme running through these. I just love this sort of, to my mind, it's almost like sort of tapestry. Yeah. A peacock, a badger, a unicorn, or a peacock, a unicorn, a badger. Sorry, I'm reading it backwards. Um, I think the world and his wife has this. The world and his wife is stitching this at the moment. I deliberately didn't start it because everyone else was stitching it. And uh, yeah, I'm just a bit miserable like that, really. I thought I'll start something different. Polly Philip, 1772, which is a new purchase off a stash on load site. And the exciting thing about this, I found out when I received it, is that this is stitched in tent stitch. So theoretically, this is going to be quite a quick stitch. It's quite a long verse, I'll read it another time. And then the last one, and I can't wait to start this. Well, I can't wait to start it, but I can't wait to stitch it and have it on my wall. Country Life Sampler, adapted from an English sampler dated 1783. And again, this was bought from a stash on load page on Facebook. So that's it, that's all my whips. All, how many did I say, 12? So all 12 of them. And then the extra charts that I have all the plans for, obviously. Um, a few of you might be sitting there but we have sales going on, you haven't shown those whips. I've got one, two, three finishes to show you. I've been on the finishing train this last 10 days or so. First piece you probably won't be surprised by it because I've been talking about it on Instagram. It is 2020 Pandemic Sampler by Sarsi Girl on Instagram. And da, 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 da. It is complete. So this is the one that I've just finished stitching, 25 count one over one and it was just hard work <laughs> love it now it's finished it's not symmetrical <laughs> i will discuss that in a minute it's supposed to be symmetrical it's not symmetrical um yeah i love it now it's done absolutely love it now it's done and i was stitching it in a hoop i had to stitch in a hoop because i couldn't stitch over one in hand on 25 count and I don't mind stitching in a heap I really don't mind but it just seemed to be taking forever um as you can tell the fabric isn't or you can't tell because I haven't shown the front page but the fabric is completely different hers is on a very sort of dark moody background I just use this piece of uh, 25 count I should imagine it's Lugana and the colours, again, I've just pulled from stash, tried to use up a few of my overdyes that I had from another project, tried to stick as true to the original as possible. Um, but yeah, so I basically, I'd done it all, and it was all fine up until this final corner. And then this owl, I counted down to his ear, and then just took his head the wrong way. And so that then threw me out for everything. And there should have been another one of these in this corner. Wasn't going to fit in. Wasn't terribly disappointed by that point. <laughs> I was about ready to finish this. So I thought, well, I'm going to put my initials in. So I just backstitched my initials and the year. And that has filled it up quite nicely, I think. So yeah, so that's that finished. So I'm really, I'm really pleased it's finished. It's a lovely design. It's a great piece. I'm not... A huge house stitcher <laughs> I've come to the realization um, possibly certainly if in hand it would have been easier but oh gosh it did take quite a long time in a hoop but yeah so I'm really pleased that one's finished the second one I started at the beginning of July with content stitcher Kim and Darlene of Darlene Dion designs they were doing hosting a sow I'll write the name of it down below. And I was on the fence about whether I was going to start it. I was like, oh, I don't, I don't know, funny. Started it, absolutely loved it, and I finished it. 
So this is Mighty Acorns from the Winds of Autumn Blackbird Design Books. Blackbird Designs book, sorry. And again, there have been some modifications. So basically, yeah, I really enjoyed it all. And then you got up to this point and there were quite a lot of smaller twigs, I suppose, coming off of this twig itself and a lot of little leaves here and there. I just couldn't be bothered. So, and also there are a couple of just random stars here. So what I've done is I have put my initials there with the date. And then I've just moved the stars up to fill and put a few acorns in to fill in around here instead of doing all the smaller branches. Um, I used the schnickle for the house, which is absolutely lovely, lovely, love it. The rest of it, I think I used the DMC conversion, possibly, or did I just make it up? Or I made it up. I don't think there was much of a DMC conversion. But yeah, so it's done and dusted. I really like it. Quite happy with the modifications I have made. Yeah. <laughs> I think this stick to my initials and date, I was thinking the other day, is going to might be a bit of a dangerous precedent to start. I could end up with sort of three quarters of a massive piece of, <laughs> of a chart done and just go, oh, had enough. Fill the entire page up with my name and initials there. That's it, finished. But, um, but yeah, it's quite nice to do. And I, for those, I've just been finding the, uh, I've just been using the Brenda C's sampler, Brenda Keys sampler book where she has all the different things in it. And then the final finish, and Alison and stitching with it is probably gonna get, for God's sake, I don't think she's even started this. So last year I started Fancy Blackett with Ellie Reddy Stitcher, Elaine. Again, there's a theme. Elaine and I seem to start a lot of things together. And um, Alison Stitching Whippet joined us. And so this year we were going to do another fancy bracket and Ali Stitcher has joined us. Um, and we chose another fancy bracket because we do like her. Started on the 1st of August and this is Brooms. And this is also finished. This is the only thing I have, in my defence, this is the only thing I have worked on for the last couple of days and or for, for yeah i think it took me three or four days and it is very easy stitching um but yeah i absolutely love it i'm so pleased with how it's turned out and again i have put my initials and date in the top this had fb seven had fb 1776 or something in it i don't know so i just exchanged it for my initials and date because this would appear to be a thing that we are now doing at the beginning of august which is great love it and so I thought, well, if I date it, then I'll be able to look back and remember what years I did what. And the fabric, oh, actually, sorry, I'll talk about the two fabrics. The fabric for this is natural laundry soap. Natural laundry soap, sorry. Nicholas Flamel Designs, who is Imri, and then a couple of numbers. I will put it down below on Instagram. If you're on Instagram, you'll probably know who I'm talking about. If you're not, go to the description box and I will have written it down below. Um, so yeah, so that was his 32 count natural laundry soap, which is lovely. And I've still got wedges left to do smalls with. And again, another one of his, this was his other piece. Um, I bought three pieces from him, I've got one left. And this is old book, 32 count again. Lovely, lovely, lovely linens. Just, yeah, fabulous linens. And again, plenty left of that one to either do another tall skinny or some small. But again, I'm sorry, I can't remember his name on Instagram. I will write it down below. Um, and then I think plans. So excuse me. So basically, as I've said, it's a stubble fields, autumn, and I just had a mad moment. So I kitted up a whole load of autumnal projects. I'll probably actually show you those in my next frost tube. Um, probably won't start them all. I'm only kitting them up with DMC. So it's not all that bad. But I have picked one that once I have finished the Monica's Stitching Studio Scarecrow Sampler, that's small. 
I'm going to start, I think, best day plans and all that, Kathy Barrett's Autumn Harvest. Wonky donkeys. Um, this is, I think, 108 by 116 or something, so it is reasonably small. Quite heavy stitching here, obviously, within the quilt box at the bottom, but yeah. Looking forward to starting this piece. I have got the DMCs, I haven't got the fabric, it'll just be a scrap because it's not going to be huge. So that will be a small ish, small that I'm starting, hopefully. And then the next mega project that I'm starting is going to be at the beginning of September for Stitchy Rachel's birthday. And uh she bought this chart at the beginning, earlier in the year, and I said, I've always loved that pattern. I'll buy it, we can start off your birthday. And <laughs> she was like, oh, okay, if you insist. I'm like, yes, I insist. So I will be starting with the needle two at the beginning of September. Now this is chart, this is from Leela's studio, and this is all charted, basically, in classic colour works with one gentle art and a couple of DMC. And so I was going to do a conversion because I didn't want to have to buy all the fancy floss. And I think I sort of tried to convert one piece whilst I was standing in a shop and probably got bored and just gave up and thought, right, I'm just going to buy all the fancy flosses. So I have got all the fancy flosses somewhere that are all looking lovely. Cost a lot of money. She's one expensive broad is Stitchy Rach, honestly. But it's a lovely chart. Can't wait to start. Obviously, we'll both have it finished for her birthday next year. <laughs> we can start another mad one. And I don't know what hashtag she's going to use yet for this, but she will have a hashtag. So that's the beginning of September. So those are my main plans, really. I mean, I do already have, I have been over the last, <clears throat> excuse me, have been over the last sort of a couple of months trying to pick a, a focus piece to finish in amongst other pieces. I've quite enjoyed making decent progress on some of my bigger charts. Um, whether I now just sort of, uh, for the next couple of months, start working you know, week on everything or what have you, I don't know, whilst also having that focus piece. I don't know, I just don't know what my plans are. I'll pick up what I want, when I want. Um, I have already made plans for next January of how I'm going to structure and organize my year. Um, I probably won't bother writing it in a diary. <laughs> It'll probably only last till February, but we'll give it a go. Um, so that's it. That's my first ever whip parade. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope possibly I've shown you charts that you might not have seen before, although I doubt it. I'm fairly normally boring for my charts. I sort of see things, people that stitch you on Instagram and go, oh, I like that. Um, but yeah, thank you very much for watching. I'll be back at some point, possibly, I'll probably wait until probably a week or so after I've started that with the needle two for Rachel's birthday, just to have that to show you. Um, yeah, other than that, I hope you have a good August. I hope you keep cool in the heat. I hope you get lots of stitching done and I'll speak to you later. Bye.